there is no way in any capacity this video could go wrong. <laughs> Brian Von VA here narrating for Mr. Ripper as always, and today we're going to be explaining D&D to beginners in very wrong answers. If you'd like to explain D&D to a beginner in a wrong way or a wrong answer, please do so in the comments below. I heard this on a 60 minute special as a kid. During the tail end of the satanic panic, the players in Dungeons and Dragons fight their way through a maze, trying to be the first to reach and kill the dungeon master, so that they can become the next dungeon master. Dun dun dun. Players are awarded points for how many times they stab the dungeon master. <laughs> Every week, three dungeon masters pitch their campaign story and world-building ideas to a panel of dragons who are rich businessmen who absolutely did not steal all the gold they are hoarding. Why do you ask? Who will decide if the campaign is good enough to receive funding and be turned into an actual campaign that will be played by players? Oh no. You all make up a story together and then cosplay it into a porn that you video and sell. <laughs> Stand-up comedy where you try to explain how Dragon got into a dungeon, or vice versa. Bible reenactment with fingerings. <laughs> Pretend things happened because a rock told you it did. <laughs> so, you know what acting is, right? Imagine that. But with math every couple seconds to break up the acting. Oh, <laughs> no, I hate you for that. Worship ritual of sacred math rocks. Ew. It's a social deduction game to find who has the most scarring trauma. Math may be involved in also snacks. Read three full textbooks front to back before even thinking about playing. Oh, it sounds like school all over again. Someone plans a thing and the rest play the exact thing that was planned. The fastest method of proving that no friend group has a window of time where all members are available. Chaotic bisexuals trying and failing to use math to bring order to their flirting. <laughs> Our scriptwriter had something to say about that one. <clears throat> Not sure you have to explicitly be bisexual to use this method of flirting. But let's be honest, it probably helps. Using gambling to do creative writing. Monty Python and the Holy Grail recreated poorly and with very little budget. <laughs> to paraphrase the guys from Adventure Time, it's where you and your friends play pretend, but one of your friends has the power to tell you you're pretending wrong. <laughs> Satanists pretending they're the good guys to varying levels of success. Have you ever wanted to simultaneously explore you and your friend's gender and sexual identity without ever touching one another and throw shiny rocks with numbers on them around? May I present to you D&D. Speed running how long it takes one person to question your sanity and or morality. You and a bunch of people hallucinate together for four hours. <laughs> Somehow you have a good time. No mushrooms needed. You will frequent many dungeons and fight many dragons. Exceptions may apply. Mass hallucinations and wanton murder with a side of hijinks and theft. Occasional altruism not included. Free group therapy sessions. Everyone shows up on time every week and there are never cancellations. You can pet the dog, eh, probably, eh, maybe. Actually, it depends on the DM, really. Nerds pretend they're wizards, and soon they will be for real. It's math, Fifty Shades of Grey, and Monty Python in a trench coat. It's like when you have an imaginary argument in the shower, but RNG dictates whether you win the argument or not. The Lolfish. You play as a dungeon and try your best to entice dragons to live inside you and do dragon stuff. In between sessions, we worship the Dark Lord of Hell and have a blood orgy. A quick nap and clean up and back to playing as a dungeon. A group of people pretends to invade someone's underground home to murder them and steal all their belongings to pawn later in a medieval village. 
A simple walk to Grandma's house through the woods and swamps and tunnels. A group of friends get together to try and kill God. You try and find the best way to screw with someone's lifetime of hard work. Have you ever played craps? Some nerds decided there were not enough dice and it was okay to eat over the table. It's an asymmetrical player versus player combat game where one player is given control over monsters and dungeons and the objective is to kill the players. You play as a child who has fallen into a mountain hole. You meet a flower and a goat and venture on to kill and befriend as you see fit. And most of all, you can't take back what you did. Even cheating won't help. D&D is a darkly humorous tabletop game. It takes place after the end, an alpha complex, an isolated underground and or domed city run by a supercomputer known variously as the computer and friend computer. After most of the human race was wiped out by some freak accident, the computer tried to figure out what went wrong. Unfortunately, the computer's databases have been corrupted, and after finding some Cold War propaganda, it concluded that communists caused the disaster or possibly some other nebulous threat. No one is quite sure what happened anymore because most of world history has been heavily edited. One player, the DM, wears a leather corset and thigh-high boots over fishnets. The other players wear leather hoods with zippers to open and clothes for the mouth and eyes. <laughs> no! The DM dictates all activity and enforces their authority with a whip. Oh. The trick is that because the DM respects the feelings and autonomy of the other players, in spite of the fact that a key component of the game is pretending they don't, the other players are really in charge. Their comfort and desires dictate the demands that are made. <laughs> Once everyone is satisfied or there has been a massive breach in trust that causes players to withdraw, the game is over. <laughs> there are so many questions in my head. <laughs> Ever heard of the Avengers? Just watch Critical Role or Dimension 20 and do exactly what they do. The harder you throw the dice, the more you'll win. It's when daddy and daddy love each other very much. Imagine dragons. How to fuck a dragon. A dragon anatomy class where the professor has a penchant for alterative appellations. A snack food dinner party featuring math-based activities. Game of Thrones improv, with a little more focus on the fighting and a little less focus on the sexual proclivities of the group. It's like chess, but with a bigger board and with dice. One guy tries to kill three to five other people with rules that everyone's making up as they go. The Devil's Game, where a bunch of cultists worship platonic solids. Roll some balls to be successful. A fight to make your character the main character. To make big numbers by multiclassing six times because a YouTube video told you how to win D&D. To follow the rules to a T and kill all those who would break the holy rules. Hail King Crawford! Oh, and uh, <clears throat> above all else, D&D is the opportunity to make the angiest, saddest, strongest anime protagonist just so you can go all out. Just this once. <laughs> yes, yes, Freezer, I have the Super Sands. You are the deads. So basically, you run around and kill everything. Also, ignore that voice in the sky telling you to go clear that goblin cave. Go ransack the nearest house instead. At first level, everyone can expect to get a Vorpal Sword. It's for you. If you like planning for hours, only for everything to go wrong at step one. <laughs> hey, it's exactly like Skyrim without the screen. Everything you try to do in real life, you can do with a dice roll. Magic rocks decide our fate. The gods have made life into a game. D&D &D is a role-playing game about running around holding a pair of dice while screaming sex jokes about bards and dragons. Rolling nat ones on your breathing checks <laughs> and watching your level one wizard friend die to a fly 
coughing in their general direction. Oh no, my heart! <laughs> I meet with a group of strangers over the internet twice a week and go through multi-hour impromptu team building exercises where we develop our conflict resolution skills and discuss politics, economics, and ethics. Settlers of Catan, but with dungeons. <laughs> the DM is always wrong, absolutely, and you should voice your opinion. A sex party where people roll dice to see if they can get it up or not. If you roll too low, you die. Like how jocks play fantasy football, but for nerds. Yeah, actually, basically. Like playing imagination with your five-year-old and their stuffed animals. Cooperative storytelling between a group of friends who are all very romantically successful. So, you know that satanic cult grandma warned you about? Yeah, it's that. Just watch Dimension 20. You'll learn what a game is actually like in reality from that way better from the books. <laughs> you and your friends pretend to be heavily armed and heavily militarized randos who run around scaring the locals. <laughs> Doing anything but reading a book. Books are for nerds. Make believe with shiny math rocks to figure out between you and your best friend who the fictional bar maiden would smooch. <laughs> it is kind of like Pokemon, but you put dragons and monsters like that in your bag of holding. And then you have tournaments in big fight dungeons where you have your monsters fight your friends' monsters. So, eh, medieval times Pokemon? You remember when you were a kid and you used to play cops and robbers? It's just like that, but with a lot more math. It's a competition, the players versus the DM, and maybe the other players, and you have to win. It's like hot lava, but for people who hate physical activity and love pizza. It's like a family dinner, but with more dick jokes. If your parents are still alive, you are considered a fake. A satanic ritual involving dungeons and warlocks. It's like real life Mass Effect with swords. Don't say that, I love that game. Get a group of friends. I'm going to try to kill all of you. <laughs> Dragons have been captured and locked in castle dungeons. It is the player's goal to rescue them. It's what you do to heal your inferiority complex and <laughs> be who you would be if there were no consequences to your actions. This is not an RPG. It stands for Dine and Dash, Dinner, Dine and Dash, Triple D. A group of people take a long time to schedule a meetup, and then proceed to argue about whether they should try and open an imaginary door. Oh, also there's snacks. Everyone shows up on time once a week. First, you spend the day setting up a nice cat palace with dangly things and hoops to jump through and many, many tears. Then you herd a bunch of cats into the room. Some will wander around the room ignoring it, some will fight each other for favorite spots. When they get hungry, they'll meow and meow without touching the food you already have out until one brings you a dead animal from outside. Then they'll wander around some more. If you try and herd them towards the cat palace, they'll get upset and either bite you or knock it over. Then they all leave, and you have to order and set up a new one or they won't come back. Ah, uh, it's a great game with balanced systems, clear rules, complete adventures, and make sure your DM has everything they need to run exciting campaigns. Hey, best of it all, it's made by an amazing company with great ethics that really stands by its values and never disappoints with its products. You have no idea how hard it was to not smile and laugh from that last one. Hey everybody, Brian Von Vier checking in after the vid with tears in my eyes and uh, a newfound pain in my jawline from laughing so hard. <laughs> Please leave a like, subscribe, and to ring that bell so you get notified whenever we post a brand new video, short, or in case we go live, which we might do eventually. We, you, you never know. I don't even know. We don't know. That said, leave a comment down below as well, not only for the algorithm gods and the satanic ritual gods out there, but because we love you. And we also want to hear your stories about 
Well, in this case, explaining D&D wrong to a beginner, so go for it. That said, I always try to end things on a high note and I just wanted to say, I'm combining two things at once. The fact that I've had so many people come see me and that I always tell people, hey, yo, I'm Brian, you know, that's Mr. Ripper. Come say hi to me too if you like me as a narrator because I stream and whatnot. I've had quite a few people do that, you know? And I've had a guy recently even message me telling me how much he, he liked my content when I played Deep Rock Galactic. And I just, I'm, I'm grateful to know that I've, I've made a smile on some people's faces. I've made an impact in the lives of so many people. And it's, it's hard to imagine that like four years ago, I was in such a dark place thinking that my life was basically over. And then even two years ago, I was dreading waking up every goddamn morning. And then now I can wake up and every time I see a new script ready to go, I'm like, okay, I'm going to make someone laugh today. I'm going to make someone smile today. Maybe make someone cry today. I don't know. But to know I have that ability and that I'm able to, to give you guys, gals, and non-binary pals, everyone and anyone else out there, a chance to just feel something, it's good. So thank you all. And I hope to see a lot of you coming towards my content too. Because, I mean, you know, I, I, love, I love seeing you here. But I want to see you where I can, I can talk to you guys and gals and everyone else in, in between just directly. So come say hi to me on Twitch. I'm in the description below. Just come say hi. And uh, I hope everybody out there does have a good day and a good laugh. Love you all. Be safe, be happy. We'll see you next time.